What's up, what's up, guys? This is uh, Mark Mendez, real estate coach here. Um, doing another episode of Everyday People. This will be episode four. Not that I'm not excited to have any other guests on, but this one, man, I'm I'm pretty, pretty stoked to have on Mr. Brandon Elam, Mr. No Slack himself. Um, so, yeah, let's, without further ado, um, Let's get Mr. No Slack on the phone himself. He's currently in Hawaii. Master Sergeant Brandon Elam. Um, he sent me his title. I'm going to have to have him explain it because I'm not a military guy. So even though my parents, my, my family's military, I don't know how to read these ops. SGM 524. Yeah, so let's give what we used to call him as B. White. That's a real nickname. That's real. What's up, brother? What's going on, Mr. No Slack? Hey, what's going on? Well, you are uh we are recording, we're filming. Um so man, I'm 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 super excited to have you on this on this. Uh this this has been the one right here I've been waiting for for a long time. How you doing? Well, first I would I would tell you, man, I really appreciate you just thinking of me and uh, having me on. It's an honor. I watch all the episodes. I think uh you guys are doing amazing and it's like I said, it's an honor and privilege you even ask me to be on there. Oh man, the, the privilege is mine. The privilege is mine. So what's going on? You're in uh, Hawaii right now, huh? Yeah, that's right. I'm I'm in Hawaii, uh, uh, Honolulu, Hawaii, right now in 25 ID. Uh, I serve as the uh, officer major here in uh, 25 Sustainment Brigade here in Hawaii, in so, paradise. In paradise. Well, you were recently. You just got to Hawaii, right? You were re- previously where at? Yeah, recently I w- I just moved here. I've been here about four or five months. I was in Korea. So I spent a year on a hardship tour uh, down in Korea, in uh, South Daegu, uh, Korea. First and foremost, man, thank you for your service. You know, we thank you all for the sacrifice that you guys make every single day, every single year to pro- to provide us the freedom. Um, you know, a lot of crazy stuff going on in the world. So, you know, that, that definitely needs to be stated. Um, so tell me, man. Well, well, I appreciate that. But you know what I like to say, man? I'm not just to interrupt your cut you off. Nah, I like go ahead. To this is your show. This people- is your show. Uh, no, no, no. Everybody always says, you know, thank you to me. But I will tell you right now, um, I would say thank you to everyone else. And uh, I would take you to your, your father, your brother, every, and all the other people who served before me. And also, it, we cannot serve. No, but not, no service member can serve without their family and support group. Absolutely. Um, there, there's just no way. So I think when everyone says thank you to me, I, I do appreciate it. But I would like to say thank you. First, it's an honor to serve. I always tell the soldiers every day, uh, I, don't get, I don't get to serve. I don't. Uh, I don't have to serve. I get to serve, yeah. and, and it's lucky that, that uh, we've been allowed to serve this great country. And I never forget that. I never forget everybody to come before us. So I uh, thank you for for thanking me for my service. But again, I like to thank everybody out there and yourself and everybody who knows me and everybody who supports me. I like to thank them too. Oh man, I definitely support you. Um, you one of the people that has always supported me, man. No matter what, you know, we grew up together with the Abdul Jamis and. Playing a lot of basketball, playing a lot of street football, tackle football, all that good stuff. So, um, Mr. No Slack himself, first and foremost, man, give the people a definition of, of what exactly No Slack means to you and, and how well, you I'm came a, up I'm with that. Tell you what, I, I, I would like to tell you where it originated from. So, what's funny thing is uh, where it originated from is I was, um, you know, I was working at elementary school, Mary Hall Elementary, and I felt like I just. You know, I love Texas. I love San Antonio, but I felt like I just needed to do more. I feel like I could affect more people, uh, help more people, and just do more life. Um, when I joined the military, I didn't even tell anybody. Uh, I basically just showed up, and uh, the day I left, that's when I told everybody I left. And it was funny because uh, my brother tells a story like it's yesterday. He says that we were playing Madden or Tech Bowl, whatever we were playing. And he paused the game, and I said, I'll be back. And it's been almost 20 years, and I ain't been back. <laughs> but... uh when I went to basic training, uh, I was, uh, you know, I, I was 24 years old. Um, I knew that this was, I'm not going to say my last chance to be great, but I felt like it was my last chance to really uh, affect the world and, and do great things. And that's what I felt. So I was hungry, motivated, starving in basic training. It was hard. Back, I mean, back then it was a little different, but it was hard. But I remember the drill star, and he was like, uh, come here, Elam. And he couldn't really say my name right, man. He was like, just Elam. calling me all types of names. He, you know, he didn't know what to say. So he said, you know what, come here. I said, Roger, go far. He got in my face. Said, you're, n- you're no longer Elam. I don't want to hear you say Elam. I said, Roger, that's real far. He said, your name is No Slack. And I just looked at him. I said, Roger, go far. He said, you know why? I said, because you said so, Joe Sarn. He said, no, because you have now. I said, Roger, go He said, everything you do in life, 
and everything I've seen you do. He said, when you go to the, uh, when, when I see you do PT, you have no sweat. When I see you eat cow, you have your heart. heart. Remember, remember back in the Abadami house, we used to eat over there. You have to put your elbows up because if you didn't put your elbows up, somebody would take your food. You know yeah, what I mean? Absolutely. So, absolutely. So when I used to eat like that, and basically they would laugh at me and they'd be like, oh, what is wrong with this guy? So the drill song was just like, man, everything I've seen you do, you have no slack. So I was like, you know what? That is my mantra. And that, that's what I've been looking for. So I say no sack is more like a movement, right? It's something, it's a motivation, a movement, what we do. It's not mine, it's everyone. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, they call me no slack because I have none, but I do that to keep the motivation, right? Everybody needs it. Uh, when you tell somebody it's funny, the easiest thing, right? we go to Diamond Head. So there's a mountain here called Diamond Head. And you're walking down this Diamond Head and it's, it's brutal, man. The, the march is brutal. And on the way down, these people come here. Tourists come here to do Diamond Head. And they're looking like, man, this is the worst day of their life. You know what I tell them? I tell them good morning and welcome, brother. And their their light, their face lights up. That's what I feel about no slack. I feel like, no, what you're going through, if I yell no slack at you and you see me moving and shaking, uh, you're going to do the same thing. And um, that's kind of what no slack is. No slack is everything you do from family to school to, to love to everything you do. I'm going to give you no slack. Man, that's that I love that, man, because you know, there's times where I get down and I'm in and you hit me with the no slack and I feel like, man, I'm slacking. Like you can't tell me that, but you know, you you've been really great at, at telling me, man, okay, you, you may have fallen off on the gym, but you're doing all these other things and, and, and I think it's great that you say that that it's every aspect of your life if you can approach it with that no slack mentality. And I tell you, man, every time I see that, Seth post it, you post it, like it really it really gets me to like, man. What what can I do better today? What what can I do better? And so I love that, man. Um, what is what is some of the things that, that have created this leadership, um, the leader in you that allows you to now train soldiers and and impart that leadership to them? I'm I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna say failure. I'm gonna say failure, I'm gonna say um things we went through in our life and things we me and you probably went through together. Um I, I think the biggest thing that uh, the reason and there's a couple of things, but first thing is failure. All the, you don't understand that the failure is really not to discourage you or to kill you or demotivate you. It's actually to teach you, train you, and to make you better. But we don't know that, right? We're young, we're young and dumb, right? Like that song the kids love, young, dumb, and broke, right? That's that's really what it is. All the mistakes I made, the things I didn't do, things I wanted to, um, you know, no no mistake. And I, I love football and basketball, but I just wasn't the greatest player. Let's just be honest. My, my hard work was more than my talent. And, it, and that's okay. Right. That is OK. But it took me a long time to understand that. Um, but I would tell you the best thing about uh, learning leadership and growing is just the experiences you go through mm-hmm. and, and things you can share and relating to others. Right. Because I tell you, there's soldiers nowadays that think about this. I've been in the Army 20 years. Mm-hmm. There's soldiers that are, are the same age as my daughter who's 18 or young kids. And they, they haven't been through the same thing we've been. Right. So you have to relate to them. But the reason why we can relate is because no matter how old you are, everybody goes through something, right? Everybody everybody has failure in life and goes through things. So I would tell you, uh, leadership for, for you and me, I mean, there's a book, right? And I was going to mention, I was thinking about what I was going to say when you talked to me. And I read this book probably four years ago. Mm-hmm. I was uh, I was a first sergeant, at, uh, and it reminded me of you, and I'm going to tell you why in a minute. But I read this book. It's funny because I was watching the Pittsburgh Steelers. Anybody who knows me, I'm a huge Pittsburgh Steelers fan. My dad was born in Pittsburgh. You know that. I'm a huge Steelers fan. So I'm watching this game, and uh, I ain't gonna lie to you, I was at a point in my life where I was a first sergeant. What, what's next for me? Mm-hmm. When I take this diamond off and I'm not in charge of a formation, who am I? And I was going through that struggle with myself. And God God works in mysterious ways and has ways of doing things. So my wife was like, hey, I need you to read this book that someone sent me. And I'm like, man, I'm just trying to watch this game. Man. I'm not trying to read no book right now. She said, well, let me ask you a question. I said, okay, what's the question? She said, are you a carrot? Are you an egg? Are you a coffee bean? And I'm like, I'm an egg. She's like, why? I said, because I'm hard. She's like, I was like, yeah, I am. You're right. <laughs> anyway, so so I got this book, and, and I'm gonna just go. And I was reading this book, and in the book, it was talking about this football player. And remind me of you because um, you are an amazing football player, very talented, strong, hardworking, uh, epitome of, of of what you want on a team. And he had some injuries, and those injuries didn't let you get to where you got to. But those injuries taught you and made you the man you are today, right? Because you had to go through that stuff. But in this book, so with what it relates to the carrot, the egg. First of all, let me ask you, what do you want to be? The carrot, the egg, or the coffee bean? What would you like to be? Carrot, egg, or the coffee bean? 
Yep, what you want to be? Man, I'm, this is a random guess, but I, I would have said I would have probably said the egg also because hard on the outside, kind of soft and mushy yeah. on the inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, and that, you know what's crazy? I was thinking the same thing. Yeah. But let, let me let me give you the analogy. So life is three three pots of water, right? Your love life, your career, your family, three boiling pots. I'm on this water is hot, super hot. Okay. So what happens when you throw the carrot in the water? It softens. It gets soft, and that's what happens to you in life. When bad things happen to you, death, uh, struggles, failure, you become a carrot. You want to be mushy and give up, right? Yeah. What happens when you throw that egg in the water? Uh, it hardens on the outside. It hardens on the outside, but guess what? The, the yellow gets it gets bitter, and mm. life can do that to us. Life can make us bitter. Because we feel like, oh, I deserve this, or I should be this, or I should have that, or I should get this job, or I should have this money. As we get bitter and we're angry, and instead of fixing ourselves, guess what we do? We blame somebody else. Yeah. Right? But then, what happens when you put the coffee bean in the water? That one I would not know. I've never seen a coffee bean okay. in hot water. I'm going to say well, you it, know what's it, crazy? it dissolves. No, actually it doesn't. And that's, that's what's great about it. And, and I use this with my soldiers in, in any leadership seminars I do. I do this, I do this in front of them, right? Mm-hmm. And I, I challenge you to do that with your kids and show them this kids you're trying to teach. I love that group you had with the teaching them about being young men. Yeah. But back to the coffee bean. So when you throw that coffee bean in the water, guess what it changes the water? Guess what happens to the water? It changes color. It, gets, it changes color. But guess what happens to the bean? It never changes. The bean does not change. And the analogy for life and what we got to be is the coffee bean. No matter what situation, no matter what they put us in, we do not let the water change us. We change the water. The water will change to us. We keep our shape. We keep who we are, those morals, those values, all that stuff that we learned from our parents and what we learned in the streets and the sewers and everything we've learned in our life. We stay our, our person. So we stay the coffee bean. So it's funny because they call me the coffee bean. Because I tell the story all the time. Every time I do leadership conference or I do something, I tell the story. But I think it just relates to life, man. Because we can get bitter, man. We can get we can get soft and just want to give up, right? Yeah. And then also we can get bitter and be angry and be like, oh, they owe us this and why did I get this job? But if you're the coffee bean, bro, no matter what someone tries to do, no matter what life brings us, we will change life. Mm. So that that is something that uh, I carry with myself, and I think. I think you've always been a coffee bean, Mark, always. Uh, we just didn't know we were coffee beans. Absolutely. Um, no matter what they th- they threw at us, no matter what you've been through. I mean, I've, um, so I, I would tell you that that coffee bean story just really relates to me and relates to life very well. And I think we've been doing it. Um, I feel like leadership is not um, not what you say, but mostly what you do. You know, yeah. I feel like a, the wise soldiers, wise soldiers want to follow me or do follow me or a privilege to follow me. It's not because they have to. I don't want them to follow me because they have to. I don't want them to do what I tell them to do because they have to. Which they do, but I don't want them. What I want them to do is to do it because they, they want to, not because they have to. Because Absolutely. if I inspire them. So in Army leadership, right, there's a definition, and I love this definition. It says you're supposed to give people three things to accomplish two things. And in that definition, it says you will give everyone you meet or everyone you work with direction, purpose, and motivation to accomplish the mission and further develop the unit. Man, that that's that's everyday life. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Accomplish man. the mission but also develop the world. I know I can talk forever, man, so I apologize. No, 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 you. no, um, man. This is this is good. This is so good. I want you to keep but, going. I know I know you that, talked that, about um writing a book, man, on leadership. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so uh, right now it's in the works. I got about uh you know, I'm working on it now. I'm, I'm almost done. It's called 86 Years of Leadership. And I'm going to tell you why I say 86. Because when I say 86, I tell soldiers I'm 86. And they're like, no, you're not. You know what I'm saying? And and the reason why I say that, one, I say that because 48 Laws of Power, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it's a great book. If you haven't read it, please grab it. It's a great book, 48 Laws of Power. But basically what I want to do is, is you got to relate to people. So when I say 86 years of service or 86 years of leadership lessons, they're like, what are you talking about, bro? You're like 40 or 50. They're right. I am 40, 50. But the point is I got their attention. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, I got absolutely. Their attention. So in, in my leadership book that I'm writing right now, which should be hopefully be out soon, maybe by Christmas or late summer, uh, just basically what what I've been through in life, leadership lessons, failures, accomplishments, um, things I've seen. I mean, I've, I've done four Iraq tours, two Afghanistan tours. I've been to uh, Bosnia, Kosovo, Turkey, Iran. I ain't going to lie to you, but I would tell you that uh, 
there were times where I was going to Iraq that I accepted that I was going to die on the battlefield. And I was okay with that. I felt like that was my that was going to be my legacy to die on the battlefield. Um, they were not easy. It was it was it was not easy, and I accepted that. And I'm not saying it's right, and that's the demons that I dealt with. Mm-hmm. But I would tell you that that's what I thought my legacy was going to be: to dying in combat. And when I was okay with that. Um, so, you know, going through all of that, I just want to share those stories and those, those, those things I've been through. With him. You know, marriage, failures, everything that, that you go through, I'm to share my leadership lessons and my insights. You know, and it might relate to everybody, it might not, but I'm guaranteed that if you read whatever I write, um, one, you, you'll probably be in there because, you know, me and you go way back like beans and rice. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, but, yeah, I'm just, I just want to put something out there, you know, uh, a little my heart and soul out there and uh, just share some of the things I've been through you know, and some of my experience and some of the great people that I've met too, because I've met some amazing people. Mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you, I'll never forget um, my first combat experience. Um, I'm in Iraq. I'm leading a small team um, and we're, we're in Iraq. We're, in a, we're getting the first ever firefight, right? First ever. Now, like everybody talks about, oh, I'm a gangster, shooting, killing, all that, right? right. I'll tell you like this. When them first bullets started grazing my, around my head, you know, I, I was about to be the carrot. <laughs> 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 like, like, and I never forget that. I, I still remember the soldier next to me. Um, I, I remember, I remember scratching down by a tire, and and asking myself like, "Yo, it's my. What am I got myself into? Like, this is nuts." Like, and and I remember looking at the soldier. He was terrified. Everybody was terrified. And I was like, you know what? Well, I can't be the one that that, that uh freezes right so now. They're good, looking for yeah. me for leadership. They're looking for me. So I said, if I die right now. I'm gonna die. So I jump up with my weapon, Mark. I jump up with my weapon, and I ain't gonna lie to you. I have my eyes closed. Scared as I don't know what, right? Scared as I don't know what. Jump over my weapon, and, and I'm hearing rounds, but, but nothing hit me. So I'm like, so I open my eyes, and I looked at the enemy, and these jokers were running and shooting backwards at me. So basically, they weren't even looking at me either. Wow. And that was like a turning point for me in my life in, when it comes to combat. Like, I was like, you know what? What are you afraid of? They're wow. afraid too. You know what I'm saying? So, so I grabbed my squad and we chased them down and whatever happens, happens. But that was a turning point for me in my combat. Uh, and then I did three more tours. And, um, you know, picking up, I, I mean, not to be too graphic, but picking up my battle buddies or picking up soldiers' body parts and put them in trash bags, that was tough, man. Yeah. Uh, it was really hard, hard experience, man. And then what the hardest experience is, and this goes back to leadership and motivation, is when I had, a, we had to do all the, the stuff we do. Go do a funeral for a battle buddy who died in Iraq and then get right back in our truck and go right back outside and do it again. And that was, uh, that, that's a very tough, I don't wish that on nobody. I, all these young soldiers tell me, I can't wait to go to combat. I can't wait to go to war. I tell them you don't want to. Yeah. War, war will change you for the rest of your life. I still see things in my sleep that, that I, I can't get away with. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so it, I don't need to go too crazy. That, you, that'll be one of my stories in my book, but yeah, man, I just, I just want to, you know, write a book, put a little, you know, motivation out there and uh, um, really just share some of my stories and, and my experiences that, that I've been privileged. I'm not going to say that I had to do right. because, like I said before, I'm going to say I, I get to do this. I don't have to do this. Mm-hmm. So, um, no. But, you know, you'll get a first copy of my book, signed hey, and ready. You already Signed. Know. I need that signed, man. I, I might need two because I might want to frame that one and then have one to read. But you, you got man, you, you already know, man. Uh anything you need from me, uh, you got it. Um and I am gonna tell you like what I what I, I love what you're doing. I love uh, you know, everything you everything you've ever done, Mark, you have uh you've exceeded, man. And uh, you know, I always I always think God puts us in mysterious places and does mysterious things and he's doing right with you. And I love how you say, you know, I might not have been on my fitness, but I'm on every, I'm on everything else. And the funny thing about fitness, it's not all about your body. Um, your mind controls so much of what you do. Absolutely, man. You know? Look, man. I tell you what, we 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 need you on Chalk Talk for sure. Like this, this needs to be a whole. This could be. We could have a whole couple series. L and I told I told my guy right now, Big L. I said, man, you are gonna feel his energy. Watch, like you just gonna feel his energy. You got me. I'm in tears right now. Like I'm literally got some tears coming down my eyes, man. Just because, just the passion, the stories. You know, everything, man, that, that I just, I feel it. And, and and I think if we can do that for people, like you said, motivation is temporary, you know, but you need it every day, you know. Like motivational speakers, they, they'll tell you, they should. I mean, David Groggins themselves, he's like F motivation. 
It's like that's temporary. But just somebody new that needs motivation every single day. And that's part of the reason why we do this. And, you know, I'm just trying to inspire people. I still have things I'm working on. I got to get better at. Um, but like you said, life, if we can start changing, like the, the, the being, changing everyone else around us. And, and, you know, there's so much things going on right now. And so, you know, yeah. divisiveness. And I don't, I just want us to be, you know, better to people, you know, so. I agree, man. And and it's not like I think that analogy is great with the coffee bean. Maybe hey, I'll tell you right now. If anybody, if you hear me, uh, that coffee bean, right? You go on Amazon. I think it's like seven dollars. I think the book is like seven bucks, seven eight bucks, and it's probably like thirty cents. It's called the no. coffee bean. That's the name of the book. It's called the coffee bean on Amazon. Like okay. seven eight bucks. What I like to do is I like to buy this book and just give it to people. Like oh, I, sometimes I'll just go on or like my man Seth Dami. Uh, it's crazy, man. When we were younger, you know, me and Luke were super close. Me and Evie super close. Me and, Luke and uh, uh, Steph, you know, we were close too, but yeah. man, we talk all the time. I'm very proud of that guy. Yeah. Um, but you know what I was thinking about also? I was looking at all the good stuff that people from our, not just, I'm not going to say our uh, my class, but just probably my our decade, right, of John mm-hmm. Jay High School. And um, just looking at what Fears is doing, what Bear Clothing is doing, oh, what uh, Akron is doing. Yes. Um, I mean, I, this goes on and on. If I forgot somebody, I apologize. This is what you're doing. But you you know what's crazy? And I, I always think back. Someone asked me, why are these, these people so successful? And I was thinking about it. And I said, you know why? Because of the pride. I remember coming up when we were young, we all wanted to be a Mustang. Like, that's all we wanted to be. We wanted to be the future. We wanted, you know what I'm saying? Like, the pride with Cookie, you know, and all everybody, Mo. And Rest just, in peace, All Cook. the people, Rest Gerald peace, McClaskin. Yeah. There's so many people, but you know why we were successful and they're still taking over the world? It's because of what we were taught. Yeah. Um, we had pride, you know, and I think that's that's what we got to teach these, these young kids. It's funny because I tell a story to my kids. I'm going to give you one more story and I, I won't take too much time, but um, I tell my kids, the soldiers every day, what don't make no sense to me. They come to work. They, they go, so when, when they're off duty or whatever, they go to the mall, the beach, or wherever. They look like a million bucks, man. They got them Yeezys on, matching socks. I mean, they look, they look amazing, right? Just, just amazing. Yeah. But when they come to work, when listen to this, when they come to work, they look like a nickel. Yeah. So this is what I ask: you go to the beach, you go to the mall, you go wherever to do what? And they're like, "Well, we buy stuff, we spend money, right? Okay." And you look amazing, right? They're like, "Well, yeah, okay, great." You come to work to do what? Make, make money. Make money. And you look like, and you look like a nickel. Mm. Please answer me. Answer me what that is. And they, they look at me like, yo, you, I never thought of you that way. I said, well, think about this. If you come to work looking amazing, you can even look double amazing when you're not at work because you make more money. You'll be where you want, right? You get what you want, but you can't get it. And then I always tell people, you, you don't go, none of us, none of us. And Eric Thomas said it's the best. Nobody goes to the mall, to Burger King, anywhere and say, let me get the second best food you have. Mm. Right? Nobody says, hey, let me get last year's car that's broken. Let me, let me, you know what? Let me have the worst bed mattress you have. Nobody says that. So right. why do we, why do we act like that? Right? If, if we, nobody says, no, if I ask any soldier, I don't care the best soldier, the worst soldier. What, no, I rank them. I say, hey, what rank are you? They'll all say number one, right? All of them. Not one of them will say number two, not one. Yeah. So I said, well, how come you don't give me a number one effort? Mm. You think you're number one, but you're not giving me number one effort. And they, they all look at me like like a light bulb came on in their head. And I think so, that was instilled think, in you, man. Like I, you mentioned yourself in basketball. I, I never seen. I mean, probably Ben Uzo and, and and some like Tony and people like that. That you know, I've seen work as hard as something like basketball their whole life. Like you wanted that bad, man. You grind. You want it. Yeah. And like you said, you just weren't talented. Same thing with me. I, I loved football. I, I thought I was okay. But I mean, six you know six dislocated kneecaps later, you know all that stuff. It just it that's what that's not my story no more. That wasn't, and yeah. you have to be able to adapt to like you said. Everything you go through happens for a reason. So, man, Mister yeah. No Slack, man, I, I promise you, we, we got to do this longer and extended, and and I, I really need you back, man. So we're gonna have to work something out for Chalk Talk because the people need to hear more of this. Um, man, I'm telling you, you had me just feeling all kind of hype today now. So. I think, I think I'm going to go to the gym now. I might go dunk on Elliot. He's like 6'7", but I think I can get him yeah. right now after this. Hey. So, And then I need you to get that book, The Coffee Bean. And if you don't read it, you share it. No, I, I'm going to read it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to order that right now. 
I, you got my word. And as soon as I get it, I'm gonna post it. So you, I'm gonna take a picture of it and send it to you, so you know I got it. So is is, is, is it on page. Audible? Because I have Audible. You know, I like Audible. I think so, man. You know what? You know me. I'm old school, man. I, I can't. <laughs> Hey, and right now I'm, bump, I'm bumping that new Drake anyway. I can't get nothing else in my 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 beats but that new Drake. You know, because he I said just, loyalty to him is everything. Hey, there was a, I started listening to it on the way over here actually, and it's it's a little it's a little soft, but you know, like there are some very key points that I was relating to. Like there's one song that's yep. like, um, it's like fair trade. I'm losing friends, but I'm gaining. Yep. Um, what do you say? I'm losing friends, but I'm gaining peace or something oh, like that something. Yeah, yeah, some, yeah yeah he's like i think that's a fair trade i'm like man that's that's actually something that i'm going through right now personally so but man yeah, and, um, and that's in that crazy yeah i'm gonna let you go i know you i know i took too much time nah hey, heck no you didn't take too on. much time this this was perfect man but yeah we definitely got to get you on talk talk because chalk talk obviously we do a longer version of a show and if yeah. we got to have you on two three times because i just feel like look we're gonna we're about to go viral with this one we about to go viral with this one because you the man. So no um, man, I, I'm just I'm just appreciative of everything, man. I, I thank you for looking out for me, and you already know, man. I I I die for you and your family, just, uh, no doubt. You know I've, I've did this since the twenty years. I'm gonna tell you what, when I retire, which is coming soon, uh, I'm looking at opening up, and I know I'm gonna see if I can get you in involved. I'm trying to open up a leadership and fitness facility in mm-hmm. San Antonio. Already looking at uh some uh, real estate to put it in. I got the equipment. Uh, but we definitely got to open up a little leadership and not just focus on fitness, but focus on that 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 mental and that leadership aspect and changing the world. Absolutely, man. I need that because you know what I'm trying to do with the, what I did with that at Jordan Middle School for the for the young men. I'm trying to open that up to the city. So we definitely got to link up and talk about that. Uh, my boy uh, mm-hmm. Leron, the Penny Stock Guru, they doing things with that also, um, teaching financial uh, literacy to youth. Um, so man, I just think there's a lot of positive people that we, you know, we are connected with and we can definitely make a change, um, in our society. So, uh, no slack, man. I appreciate your time. What time is it in Hawaii right now? Oh man, it's 10 50. And what's awesome is I got up at four o'clock this morning and I went to work out with some, uh, uh ROTC cadets at the university of Hawaii who are going to be future officers one day. Nice. And I got to teach them a little bit, run up and down some hills with them. And then, you know what they, Mark, they thought they could get me. But you know what? They're not built like me. I try no. to tell them, man, you might be faster than me, stronger than me, richer than me, better looking than me, but you ain't going to outwork me. You ain't going to outwork me. No slack himself. No slack, baby. All right, my man. Well, we'll talk, man. We'll, I'm gonna. I'm so excited to share this one. Uh, this is going to be such fire. So I love you, man. Stay safe out there. I appreciate brother. everything you're doing, and we'll definitely be in contact. All right, brother. Hey, thanks again, and no slack. No slack. All right, my man. Right. Later. Wow. Man, um, Brandon Elam, um, he got his title. I don't want to mess up his title. He texted me his title. I don't want to mess this up. Um, Master Sergeant Brandon Elam, Ops SGM 524th 25ID. For those of y'all that know what that means, I don't. But I just want to thank him. Great content, man. Great stories. Great leadership. You can just feel his passion. He had me in tears. Um, I just really appreciate that guy, Mr. No Slack himself, Brandon Elam. Uh, again, this has been Everyday People. Um, shout out to all our servicemen and women out there. Thank you for doing what y'all do. Um, and we'll see y'all next episode.